Hey guys, it's Taz101 Saga wishing you a late Merry Christmas and a Happy New Tear. Got to have a lockdown joke, haven't I? Anyway, today I've got another unboxing. This is the least I've ever spent on a pistol. I saw the price and I was like, I got to have it. So I got it. And I've got a couple other things to show you. Things have been busy since my last video. Let's get to it. So the first thing really, uh, got one of my favourite rifles out again. Good old GHK AKM. Now somebody asked me in the, uh, uh, was it the GHK owners group on Facebook? Oh, is that the brand new chrome plated bolt they sell on Samoon? What they were referring to, if I begin to strip this down, I probably should have created a bit more space to do so before I did so, but never mind. They're referring to this. So this is the bolt carrier, right? Now, as you can see, that's very chromey. At least not the back bit. Now, there's a reason for that. I did this one. This is actually my winter bolt you saw in the previous video, which was far less shiny than it is now. But I've actually polished the living hell out of it. So, just to answer your question, no, it's not the one from Samoon. You can actually do that yourself pretty easily if you have the right equipment. Plenty of bits on YouTube that will actually show you how to do that. Personally, do I think the new bolt carrier, because I have seen it, it looks very nice, I will admit. But do I think it's worth the 60 odd dollars? I don't know, it's up to you. Because technically, the only bit you're actually seeing, really, when it's in the gun, is this. And that's actually the easiest part to do yourself. That's why I didn't bother so much with the back, because it's not, it's not actually that visible. I'd say do it yourself, but that does look very nice. It kind of gives the look of um, some of the Polish uh, and the Serbian AKs, which have like the chrome plated bulk carry. Not the best for camouflage, but it is the best for style. Thing number two, previous viewers of this channel and friends of mine will know that I bought the Cyber M16A1. I've done a lot of modding to it. Well, the modding has not stopped. I've managed to build one of my favorite, well, my favorite weapon combo of all time. Look at that, mate. Look at that puppy. So that's the Sima M16A1 with the GMP M203 long version grenade launcher, i.e. the earlier version of the 203. Later on they actually reduced the barrel length to about there because they realised that uh, they could actually make it shorter and maintain the same velocity and effect. This one, in fact I probably should have put the, uh, the sight on for the review, but never mind. I actually managed to get an original, original, fairly expensive but not too much. Um, rear grenade sight which goes from 100 to 400 meters I believe that attaches to the carry handle otherwise you just have the 1 to 200 sight which will be familiar like that to anyone who plays the video games and whatever apparently you can actually use the top bar real still world obviously I'm talking here you can use the top bar with the front sight and that gives you 300 absolutely love the look of this thing so anyone who's watching you know, Predator and Scarface and all that and Ewan McGregor gets a nice little shot with this in Black Hawk Down when he blows the Jeep up. That's another little movie scene that uh, comes to mind. Couldn't resist going for the Scarface reference though. <laughs> Out of those choices. Yeah, I have to say, it does add... Was it Greg? Yeah, you asked me, does it add a lot of weight to the front? It's got, actually got a grenade in it at the moment, which isn't primed, but... Yeah, it does add a fair bit of weight, but it's nothing, it's nothing horrendous. Other things have changed actually, it's now got a GMP A1 stock, which is a little shorter than the A2, and I actually prefer it, it's got a much nicer um, length to it, I prefer it personally, so I'm happy with it. That there is a real steel forward assist I got from Brownells. What I did is it doesn't actually function, but it's an AG, it doesn't matter. I cut the end off and basically filed down the a chamfer so I could stuff it in there and I just epoxied it in there so it looks the part because that was incorrect if anyone remembers my unboxing it had an A2 part because this was apparently the older version of the Simon model still got the A2 profile barrel some point I may be able to sort that out I also do need to get a new sling loop because now of course the original like US issue sling for the, for the triangular handguards you got the launcher tube in the way now 
They did have a side mount, which is where it would have been put, so I'm working on that. Until then, I've just used a bit of wire to stop this wobbling around. Anyway, and it does have the full markings if anyone's not familiar with GDP. So, the grenades I went for, just doing it slowly because obviously these will eject onto the floor. These are the ASG, I believe they're 36 round. You can get a 90 round one, which is longer. I've got three of these and these are great fun. The first day I got it, I had a little bit too much fun with it. Coming right at you. She forgives me now, and apparently it hurts. It was only wet tissue, but that's okay. Yeah, so it kind of loads just like the real thing. You stick it in. There is a problem with these, apparently, if you slam these close to shut, it can set the charge off. Um, if you're running a stronger gas with a high PSI, then the valve is gonna be pretty strongly pushed back. So I found that even pulling these really hard, it's not actually a problem. So yeah, um, definitely gonna have some fun with this. Obviously, you got your little uh, your safety right there. Ball, and off you go. Very, very close to the real 203. Guys, so this isn't one of the best looking weapon combos of all time. Please tell me otherwise. And last but not least, if you're watching George, this is your, now my, KJ Works Beretta M9. Again, thanks very much for the mates rate. I've got a nice little deal on this. Currently got the gas mag in it and I've also got a CO2 mag, which is where it's really at. I found the gas mag in this is much like my other KJ works, the CZs. It likes brute sniper gas and not much else. Um, anything else, it just doesn't work well at all. But I found that uh, this does tend to perform a little worse than the gas mag in the CZ. Probably got something to do with that gun having a very light slide, and it's also one of KJ works later designs, so I'm sure there's some improvements there. What's, what was curious about when I got this is I always wondered, it's one of the most sort of popular handguns. I love the, the externals and the look of it. It's a very nice, it's got a very nice shape to it. It's got that like, sort of a classic open top uh, slide that was borrowed, borrowed from the uh, Wolfer P38 of the 1930s that was a German service. It's got the blue nozzle so it's cleared for CO2. But the thing that got me curious is the fact that people always say the safety on this which, oh yeah, it's ambidextrous, it doesn't matter. The, when you rack the gun, it does that, see that? Now, the curious thing is, it's actually got the finger groove, so I'd imagine that when they, in the, at the time of the doctrine, when they actually introduced this into Italian and various other service of other armies, you probably would have just used the actual, see the finger serrations there? Like that, and when you insert a fresh magazine, if you're doing a reload, emergency reload from empty, just use the slide release. That solves the problem. Uh, that's how I've been reloading it. But yeah, I have to say that is a pretty annoying thing. The other thing I don't like is the trigger. The triggers. The trigger's pretty horrible, I'm not gonna lie. Like, the reset's okay, but the, the actual pull, I won't say it's as bad as a Mosin Nagant trigger, because nothing really beats that. But in terms of the actual feel in the hand, it actually fits me well, because I do have pretty big hands. So the mag release works pretty well for me. I don't have a problem with that. You know, I can get a good grip. Definitely. Yeah, um, I don't know if I'll get some more mags for it at some point. The loadout I tend to use it with is not one where the pistol is very intense. But um, yeah, it's a lovely looking pistol. It's nice to finally have one, really. I mean, I have all sorts, of, I'm into all sorts of firearms for different periods, and I didn't have the old classic M9, so. Thanks for that, pal. Right, so, the main event. As usual, my apologies about the shadows. There is really nothing I can do about that, apart from spend a lot of money on a studio. So this will have to suffice. So, Jack, if you're watching, apologies. This is actually the one from Bullseye Country Sport. I'm sorry if you were gonna buy it or something. My bad. So, let's get it on. Now this is the the lowest I've ever paid for a pistol actually. I've never seen it this low anywhere and I thought I've got to have that. 
thought it'd be a nice little addition to the World War II collection. And it's only the most prolific semi-automatic pistol of all time. So, that being said, I'm just trying not to show my address, which is on the other side, so forgive me. Ah, not giving any, anything away yet? Mostly because it was the 100th anniversary edition. That got me excited, because obviously it has the full trades and everything. I've never actually seen one of these in person, and apparently they look excellent and handle excellent, so I'm about to be the judge. So, oh, this is the one that's uh, licensed by Cybergun, that's how they're able to get the cold trades. It's also the Parkerized edition, so obviously that's the gun itself. Do we have anything else in here? Right, we have a, obviously an Allen key for the CO2, because it's a CO2 only magazine. Now I believe I saw in a video somewhere that this is a thread adapter for the end of the outer barrel, so you can install suppressors if you want. A bit goofy for a 1911, but obviously options are always good. Some KWC BBs, which I'd probably just use some messing around with. Point twos are not for skirmishing. People never like manuals anyway, but let's uh, apparently this. Uh, oh, okay. I was going to say doesn't seem to have an edge to it. Usual instructions there. It's a 1911. I mean, how hard can it be? Right, so let's have a look at this puppy then. That already looks nice. Look at that. Wow, that does, yeah, that actually feels parkerized. Obviously, it's clear, but I'm just gonna check. Yeah. Good lord, that's got some. Blimey, that has got some sound to it. That sounds a lot different to all my other handguns as far as the slide goes. Um, slide lock's very positive. This is something I've always found about 1911s. It's, it does have a very large um, kind of grip angle. Let's move this background stuff out of the way, shall we? Oops, my knife's gone under the bath. That's not good. Right, back to real life. Yeah, these do have a very large grip angle, so trying to reach the slide lock is a little challenging. I did see a video Larry Vickers did where he said that if you're doing a, you know, releasing the slide, but you, um, instead of obviously power stroking it as they call it now, is to do it with your left thumb is much easier. So yeah, that makes sense. So we got the very rudimentary classic old sights. Good old World War II sort of 1911 A1 45. Obviously it's got the uh, different, um, forget the name of this piece. There's a few changes from the 1911, the First World War model, to the A1, which were done in the 20s. So I believe this is longer. That's one of the things they changed. It's got a different mainspring housing. 1911 has actually got this sort of this safety here, of course, where you can't pull the trigger unless that's engaged. So let's do a good old grand thumb and ghost the trigger, shall we? Yeah, a little mushy, but it is very short. It is very short indeed. Let me try that a bit sort of quicker. Yeah, that's fine. I like that more than the Beretta trigger, to be honest. Let's look at these markings then. Again, sorry about the shadows, but the original paint and markings all licensed by Colt. I believe that there is a German marking of some kind. It's got the US property. Obviously this horrific shit which will be coming off. To be honest, I can't say there's too much of a change on this externally because I'm a sucker for always doing external work. Needs a bit of a clean up and I'll check the, uh, the barrel condition and everything. Yes, the outer barrel is threaded. So that's that. I thought I'd get this actually for my World War II British kit because um, certain units, especially like the commandos and that, where they had a lot of Thompsons, it made sense to use a 45. So there were a few of these around because they're all using the same ammunition. Makes sense. Um, I have to say, like, I never thought I'd really get a 1911. Like, I have the utmost respect for it because it's sort of the quintessential semi-automatic pistol of the 20th century that all the others borrowed something from. After this, it kind of just took the Browning high power to give us the 
the successful double stack magazine because the real magazines on these are limited to seven rounds, eight in total of course if you chamber one. They got extended ones now and all that but yeah this is um, the original guy was just a seven shot wonder. Which is kind of the main argument these days for why these are outdated because of the capacity among other features. It's got a safety there as well. Yeah, no double action, no half cock. It's oh yeah, I've got to press that, haven't I? Does not have a half cock, no. So cocked and locked. That's the way it's meant to be done. I have to say, I do like these trades versus the other version they did, where the trades are kind of in white. This is more realistic, so that's good. I really like this. It does feel nice. It looks the part as well. Quintessential collection piece, I think, if you're um, into the World War II stuff, as I very much am. I might change the grips though, because I want to get the ones that look like the Kongsberg grips. If anyone's familiar with the Norwegian 1911. Shout out to Morgan. Yes, I want to get the Kongsberg grips. I'd happily get the Kongsberg um, slide lock as well, but that doesn't seem to be a thing that exists. But yeah, very nice. I like it. So that was it guys, only a short one for today. Um, thanks for watching. If you've got any comments or questions, please post down below. Please feel free to rate, comment or subscribe as well. And my thoughts go out to all of you that are on furlough or even worse, not earning, um, around the world. It's been a bit of a shit year, obviously, last year, and I hope we can start to see some progress, maybe towards the end of this year or 2022. The sad reality is this isn't going to end anytime soon, and it's un unlikely that things are ever going to go back to exactly how they were. But that's the subject of another video that I'm not going to make. So best of luck, everybody. and. Hopefully we'll be back on the field in maybe a couple of months at least in my area. So, thoughts and prayers and all that. Shit that doesn't do anything but it's just nice to say. Alright, take care guys. See you soon.